I'd like to welcome Edward Burke to this Tai Chi podcast. Edward has the rare experience of being one of Jin Sun Chu's senior students. In the military, you introduced to martial arts, and uh, but you always had your sights on Tai Chi, and you, you've done a lot of reading and research on your own. Uh, we had met at the Jin Sun Club, and what was fortuitous about it, I think from both our standpoints, being so many years ago, what year was it that you joined? 1980. Yeah. What was that? Um, you were a classmate of my brother in college. So there was already a kinship or recognition. It's a, I'd graduated from Bowdoin four years before that, before I went to graduate school. And I, I arrived in Boston right after I finished graduate school and decided to get a job in the Boston area. I see. You know, one of the first things I did was look up uh, a Taiji club where I could practice and start learning for real as far as I was concerned, because anything I learned up to that point just seemed like it was introductory. And I really wanted something authentic at that point. Uh, why did how did you have this sense of authenticity? Why was that important to you? What what were your goals for wanting to learn an authentic Tai Chi? Well, it was it was the most publicly avowed form of internal arts that I was aware of at the time. And oh. I believed in the internal style. I was, even at that stage, even before I went to the Taiji school, I was very interested in Eastern uh, Eastern philosophy. And I was very much into Taoism and, and everything to do with that. Of course, I'd heard oh. the, some of the legendary stories about Chang San Feng and things like that. That was clear. And I'd even read some of the more um, um, interesting stories about the Yang family, because it, well, you can't start reading about Taiji without encountering the Yang family fairly, fairly early on, since they, that their style was the one that was most wildly, widely propagated both in China and in, in the mm -hmm. Western, in the Western Hemisphere. So I was well into that at that point, even before I came to Jin Soon's club. So I, I was using that as a standard by which to judge uh, what that, what type of school I wanted to go to and what type of instruction I was hoping to get. And then when, when you, when you actually began training under Jin Sun, how was all this verified? Uh, almost immediately. I mean, the way he taught, uh, uh, it was a struggle for me at first because I knew he was, uh, he was Chinese and would, would speak, uh, uh, more easily in Chinese and his English, was understandable, but he didn't use speaking a lot. It was mostly him showing and and uh, having and adjusting the other person's posture. And I really appreciated that because being a, um, a more scholastically minded, verbally minded, uh, it was refreshing to have something be very important, be taught without having to read about it or be told about it. Mm. And uh, uh, that was something that I've carried forward uh, a long time. And it's a very difficult thing to practice because well, uh, we'll get into that later when I talk about how I how I interpret that later. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, he was, um, I loved the way I learned the form the first time. And then mm -hmm. I loved getting corrections. I loved mm -hmm. every set of corrections I got. I loved learning the newer forms, the weapon forms and all that stuff. And every time he'd show me anything, I was, I, oh, I'm on it. I'm ready to go. Come on, show me, give me what you got. And uh, so I never felt like I was uh, in any way sort of treated differently or excluded in any way from any other students. Uh, right. Uh, because I started, you know, pushing hands just after, as soon as I started, um, uh, after I finished the first set of uh, learning the form and, and started right. the first set of corrections. Right, so, right, right. And I just, it was, and I was coming, going there uh, twice a week at least for years. And, mm -hmm. uh, and when I first started, that's what I started with. And I stuck with it. And, you know, I had a full time job and stuff like that. I was raising a family. So, you know, it was a big mm -hmm. investment of my time to uh, put that much energy into that practice. So you were part of that first school uh, on Harris Nav before yep. he moved in 84, which, in my view, radically changed a lot of the training. So the fact that you were part of this early uh, school, but also you were in the early 80s. I, I joined in the mid 70s. Uh, you were exposed to so, many of the early students, quite a few who were uh, Chinese American and yeah. knew, knew yeah. Jin Sun through Chinatown channels. So at yeah. that time, if we if we want to paint the perspective, he he was fresh teaching. 
in this country with the, a brand new school. And so the material was fresh. There wasn't a, a previous generation of students that had already graduated from him. He was uh, middle-aged, fairly young, uh, full of ambition and um, was working his way out of a restaurant job, which he began um, as an immigrant. So uh, career-wise, he was really on the rise. So we were yep. we were lucky recipients of this first wave of teaching. And I, I can sense in your excitement uh, that I share with you how fresh it was and how new it was in this country as well. Yep. Maybe in the world. Yeah. In the world. Yeah, I mean, we've... Um, comparing... Uh, doing a mild comparison of the of the three disciples that we knew about, Ipad Tak, uh, Jin Soon, and the, the other... Uh, Chu King Hong. Uh, Chu, Chu, Chu King Hong. Uh, there was almost no comparison between the three because they're all...